Hi everyone, Professor Drew Kirkhoff here from the Department of Biology at Kenyon College. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the basics of logarithmic transformation and least squares linear regression in the context of biological scaling. We're going to use Microsoft Excel to analyze some data. Excel is not the best tool for data analysis in general, but it can do the job on relatively simple tasks like this one. Now whenever we analyze data, we do so with a scientific question in mind. So in the process of teaching you to analyze data today, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about one of my research projects. My question is about caterpillars. Well, the question is not really about caterpillars, but we're going to use caterpillars to try to answer the question. Really, my question is about metabolic rate and how it changes with size. Metabolism is the fire of life, the sum of all of the biochemical reactions organisms use to keep themselves alive. We can measure metabolic rate using cell rates of cellular respiration, which releases CO2 into the environment, which is something we can measure. By knowing the chemical stoichiometry of cellular respiration, we can estimate how much energy an animal is actually using. Now, for a long time, biologists have known that as we go from small animals like mice to really large animals like elephants, metabolic rate changes in a very regular way that can be described by mathematical relationships called power laws or power functions. Here, metabolic rate is capital B, and it can be related to an organism's mass, big M here, by raising mass to a power, B, and multiplying by a constant, A. Scientists have been especially intrigued by the value of the exponent, B, which usually, but not always, takes on values around two-thirds or three-quarters. These numbers are important because they may provide clues about the general principles that guide development, physiology, and evolution and a number of different theories have been put forward to explain the different values of the exponents. So why caterpillars? Well, the species we study is called Manduca sexta, or the tobacco hornworm. You can see the horn on its hind end that gives it its name. What's great about this caterpillar is that, that it grows from a one milligram egg to a 10 gram larva in less than three weeks. Now they may, that may sound like going from super tiny to just sort of small, but it's a 10,000 fold change in mass, which is about the same as going from a guinea pig, a little bit bigger than a mouse, to an elephant. And as you can imagine, it's a lot easier to get a caterpillar into a metabolic chamber than an elephant. We use the caterpillar to conduct experiments investigating what controls metabolic rate. Of course, the first thing we need to know is how metabolic rate changes as the caterpillar grows. That's what we're going to investigate today. Does it follow a power function? Is the, does the exponent take on a value of two-thirds or three-quarters or neither? Let's look at the data and find out. These are the data in Microsoft Excel. They were collected by my student collaborators Arian Messerman and Katie Sears. We published our original study in the journal Physiological and Biochemical Zoology. But in case you haven't read that journal article, the data are available on my course website. You can see that we have five variables in the worksheet. Manduka identifies individual caterpillars. Age is in days. Instar is the developmental stage. Each caterpillar goes through five stages, separated by molts during which the caterpillar sheds its head capsule, its exoskeleton, and its gut lining so that it can continue to grow. Mass is the mass on that day in grams, and CO2 is the metabolic rate measured in our respirometry chamber in microliters of CO2 per hour. So the first thing we want to do is plot the data. In particular, we want to make a scatter plot of points with mass on the x-axis and CO2 on the y-axis, since we're describing metabolic rate as a function of mass. First highlight those two columns by clicking and holding and dragging across the two column labels. Then you just need to find the scatter plot, either by going through the Charts tab, if you have one, or you can go through the Insert menu and find Insert Chart from there, depending on your version of Excel. From there, you may have to search around to find a marked scatter plot, and eventually you'll be able to have your graph appear, which now I'm going to make a little bigger for us. If you need more time to accomplish this or any of the other tasks, you can always pause the video. Then I can wait while you catch up.
So let's look at the graph. One of the drawbacks of Excel is that it includes a bunch of useless junk, but doesn't include some of the really useful parts of a graph. So first, let's get rid of the gibberish title and the useless legend by clicking on them and hitting delete. You can do the same with the grid lines, which actually just clutter up the graph. Once you click on one, they should all highlight, and then again, you can delete them. You will also want to add axis labels so that someone can actually read the graph and know what it says. To do so, click on Chart Layout, or you may have to go through the Format menu. Then you'll see at the Axis Titles tab, and you can add a horizontal axis, a horizontal title below the axis. Here we want to note that this is mass, and that it's measured in grams. Now likewise, we'll want to add a vertical axis title, and note that here this is metabolic rate. It's also important to always include our units, so we have microliters of CO2 per hour. So what does the graph show? Now clearly, metabolic rate goes up as mass goes up. But how can we see if a power function fits the data? How can we estimate the value of the exponent? You've learned a little bit about least squares linear regression, or at least I assume you have here, but the equation for a power function is not generally the equation for a straight line. So what to do? Here's where some mathematical fun begins. If we go back to our original re equation, remember that capital B is metabolic rate and capital M is body mass. So now we can use a bit of algebraic magic based on the rules of logarithms and powers that we all learned back starting in 5th or 6th grade. You've probably forgotten them, so let me help you out. First take the logarithm of both sides, so that we have log of metabolic rate equals the log of all this other stuff. Then remember that the log of a product equals the sum of the logs of the two numbers you are multiplying. So on the right hand side, we have the log of the constant a plus the log of m raised to the power b. Then remember that the log of something raised to a power is the power times the log of the something. So now we have log metabolic rate equals the log of a plus b times the log of mass. Does that look familiar? It should. It's the equation for a straight line with a y-intercept of log a and a slope of b. But notice that this line doesn't relate metabolic rate to mass. It relates the log of metabolic rate to the log of mass. So going back to our data, we need to calculate the logarithms of our two variables. First, I'm going to move this graph to the side. First thing we'll do is put some titles on the columns so that we can actually keep track. The first one I'll call log.mass, and the next one we'll call log.co2. Now to calculate the log of mass, we go to the first cell in that column, and you type equals log 10, which is the log base 10, and then open a parentheses, and then click on the corresponding cell in the mass column, then you can close your parenthesis and hit return. Notice that negative 2.68 makes sense because that tiny little caterpillar was point, weighed only 0 0.002 grams, and 0 0.0022 is just a bit above 10 to the negative 3. So it equals actually 10 to the negative 2.69. Then to fill out the column, all we have to do is highlight that cell again, click and hold on this little square down in the corner of the cell and drag down through the column. And it will perform the same operation on each of the corresponding cells in the mass column. So then we'll have a whole column of log mass values. Now of course we could repeat the same process with the metabolic rate column, but since the two columns are side by side and in the same order, we can take a shortcut by just grabbing that little square again and dragging over to the next column. And voila, we have all of our log transform data. 
just to make sure we can go back up to the top and note 5.6 is just a little less than 10 which is of course 10 to the 1 and a bit more than 1 which is 10 to the 0 so 0.75 makes sense for the log of 5.6 so now we just have to make a new plot with our log transform data highlight the two columns and again select the scatter plot and again I'll make that a little bigger we'll want to clean up the graph like we did before deleting the legend and the title and when we label the axes we want to be sure to note that we're looking at the log of mass To get the y-axis outside of the middle of the graph, all we have to do is click on the horizontal axis values, or either right-click if you're on a PC, or double-click if, if you're on a Mac. And we need to go to the Scale menu on the Format Axis tab, and we just want to set the point where the y-axis crosses to be the same as the minimum value, so negative 3.5. We just put that into the vertical axis crosses at tab. And then the last thing we'll need to do is move this over just a little bit so it fits. We can move the chart, the axis label back a little bit. Oh, and we also need to get rid of our grid lines. So now I'm just going to move the graph so we can look at our original graph and our log transform graph side by side. You can see that the log transform data look a bit different. On our original graph, the data for all of the tiniest caterpillars, the first two instars, was very much crushed up down by the, down by the origin of the plot. On the logarithmic scale, those small caterpillars are a bit more spread out and we can see this more linear pattern this is one of the advantages of log transformation for looking at data that span several orders of magnitude. So now we can fit our linear regression model to the log transform data. To do so, just go to one of the data points and control click if you're on a Mac or right click if you're on a PC and you'll get a menu and in that menu you'll see add trend line which is what Excel calls a regression line. We want a linear model, and in the Options menu, you want to tell Excel to display the equation on the chart, as well as the R-squared value. And we'll make this just a little bit bigger font so we can read it. And then I'm also going to do some rounding just to make things a little more readable as well. that to 0.93 and the R squared value rounds to 0.98. So now let's look at the equation. Remember that the slope is the value of the exponent in our original equation in that power law. So you see that the value here 0.93 is greater than either two-thirds or three-quarters. So metabolic rate increases more steeply with body mass in these caterpillars than it does across most other organisms and it doesn't match the explanations of most existing theories. Also notice that the very high R-squared value, 0.98, indicates that 98% of the variation in log metabolic rate is statistically explained by variation in log mass. So size really does matter to the energetics of these critters. At the same time, also notice that there are some complicated patterns in the data, with these little humps that start below the line then go above it, and then go below, below, above, below, below, above, below. 
each one of these little humps actually corresponds to a separate developmental stage. So you can see the five instars that the larva goes through as it grows. All of these patterns in the data, the larger than expected exponent, the patterns of growth within instars, have not given us tidy answers. But they've helped us to ask more focused questions about how metabolic rate changes with body size. And that's what science is about, using careful observation to test your ideas about how the world works. This is Professor Kirkhoff, signing off. Stay curious.